This is the CC Radio Podcast. It was just the most massive thing I've ever seen. I, I to tell you the honest truth, I thought, well, we're the only ones left on this planet. Something's happened. we have missed something here. The fear that went in me when I seen it was just, um, like the feeling, I'd say it was fear, but I've never felt that feeling before in my entire life. It's a weird feeling, like you can't explain it when you don't know. You feel like you're being followed, but you don't know what it is. We had two to our right, another one in front of us, another one to the left, and another one just across the road, shaking the daylight out of the tree. All we get is a big red eye. I remember waking up and looking at the end of the bed and there was a figure there, almost insect-like, and then I blacked out. Welcome to the show, everyone. You are listening to Believe, Paranormal and UFO Radio. My name is Cade Moyer and thanks for tuning in. If you've had an encounter, get in touch with me. My email address is believe at ccradio.com.au or you can message me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash believe ufo radio if you enjoy this episode there are a few things you can do to help the show firstly you can go to itunes and leave us a five star rating and review or you can share the show around social media with your friends and family and that would help us grow tonight i'm joined by cameron and cameron's had some very interesting hauntings throughout his life cameron thank you for joining us thanks Cameron. that's great to be here so you were telling me on um on the facebook page there that you've had quite a few hauntings around the um i guess around one area of australia and are you able to tell us a little bit more about that maybe take us back to the first kind of haunting that you experienced yeah sure yeah um it's all sort of happened um in sort of the main area that I've grown up. Like, I've lived um, pretty much in the same sort of area. I grew up about a street away from where I'm currently living. And, um, yeah, it's all sort of just happened in that, that same area. It's, it's very sort of the area of a winter, especially, because we're in a valley, and um, it gets sort of dark around 3.30, 4 o'clock uh, in the afternoon. And, um, yeah, it gets pretty cold. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty airy <laughs> getting around. And um, it's on the edge of sort of a, a state forest as well, so there's there's that to go in with it as well. Um, so my first experience when I was sort of happened when I was about eight or nine, um, of a night, my bedroom door would uh, would open sort of by itself, and um, I'd hear footsteps sort of following after that, um, moving towards my bed. And I, I had one of these old sort of digital watches uh, back in the day in the nineties. That you had a light on it, so you could sit up and um, I sat up and I, I pressed that light, and it would light up my whole room, sort of green. And um, I, I wouldn't be able to see anything, but once that light sort of went out, um, it I would hear the footsteps sort of backtrack and run out out of my bedroom, and my my door would actually shut, like it slammed shut by itself. And um, this seemed to happen at least well, seven or eight times um, when I was younger, and then when I sort of get a bit older, it. it sort of peed it away and I wouldn't be out I wouldn't hear it anymore um but with that I thought I may have experienced um a bit of sleep paralysis or maybe um maybe a bit of, I don't know if it was just fear or if it was actual sleep paralysis like I couldn't sort of move I couldn't call out to my parents at all like I'd just be stuck sort of sitting there or lying there actually sorry and I wouldn't be able to sort of scream out. I wouldn't be able to call for anyone to come in and see what was actually in my room. I'd just be sort of stuck there and um, it would go away after a few minutes. And it, I did notice it happened uh, when those footsteps did come in a few times, but I'd wake up sometimes and I just wouldn't hear anything and I'd just be sort of paralyzed pretty much and I wouldn't be able to do anything. I'd just lie there speechless trying to call out and, yeah, I, I just couldn't do anything wow that would have been pretty terrifying at eight or nine years old yeah yeah it was i i was just freaked out like i'd um get out of my room and i'd go to my, uh, my brother's room or something like that, my younger brother's room and I'd, I'd sort of sleep under the bed or something like that just trying to escape it all um but yeah it was pretty full on and did you ever see a presence or could you feel the presence or was it only audible as in like you could only hear the steps um a bit of both. I could hear the steps as well, and, and there was, was definitely sort of a feeling of something there, but I didn't actually see anything um, when I was younger. But yeah, there was basically like the door slamming, and I could hear the footsteps and everything like that. But um, 
yeah, I, I didn't actually see anything um, in that instance. Did you ever feel in danger from any of that? Um, kind of. It was more sort of fear and sort of not knowing what it was because I couldn't actually see anything. But, yeah, it was just a lot of fear, really, just trying to figure out what was going on, um, especially being at that sort of young age. I, I didn't really know what was going on. Yeah, absolutely. And did anyone else in the house experience this as well? Um, not that I know of. My brothers didn't really sort of say anything. Um, and Yeah, neither did my parents. As far as I was aware, it was just sort of happening to me. And, and when I'd say something that they would just, would just sort of brush it off and go, oh, it's just probably the house settling or creaking or something like that. And they never, ever encountered anything like that in the house at all? No. It, my mum um, encountered something um, previously. Like with, in her childhood, she um, she actually saw her grandmother after she'd passed away um, they cleaned out her house and she appeared at the end of her bed. Um, but that's as far as sort of anything that's happened to her. That, she told me that, but there was nothing else in our house um, that she mentioned at all either. Yeah, okay. And did you encounter anything else in that house at all? Um, no, that was probably it for that, that house. Like um, There was nothing else really um, other than, yeah, those two experiences I had. Do you mind going on to the other encounters that, you, that you've encountered? Yeah, sure, yep. Um, so this one was, um, one straight away from where I'm currently living now, um, it was to do with my friends actually, which sort of leads on to my, my next, um, experience I had. Um, so my friends were visiting, um, his nan's place with his wife. Um, and yeah, uh, his wife actually saw, uh, this young girl sort of crouched over and she was sort of hugging her knees and, um, she had sort of long sort of black hair and she looked pretty upset and she was just sitting against um, the brick wall and there was like a, a pool gate that she they had to go through to get into his nan's place and um, as they sort of got closer towards it um, towards where the girl was actually sitting sorry uh, she just completely disappeared like they couldn't see where she went um, my friend's wife thought it was actually one of my friend's cousins who was visiting um, their nan as well um, but once they got in, she was expecting uh, the little girl to sort of be around the corner or something around there, and she just couldn't find her where she actually gone or or who she was. So uh, my friend said, "Oh, you know, just just leave it alone because his nan lives by herself, so they didn't want to sort of freak her out or anything like that." Um, but yeah, they sort of left it for a few years, and then um, maybe I think it was early this year they uh, spoke to her about it because um, she mentioned that there was a little girl that actually died in a car accident out the front of her place. And she was about seven or seven years old and she sort of fitted the description of what my, uh, my friend's wife actually saw. Oh, wow. So, yeah, it's pretty freaky. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. Because, I mean, it's really uncommon to hear of, I guess, so many paranormal things happen in such a close area. And, I mean, you hear of asylums or things like that, or maybe jails is a, is a better way to do it rather than being too cliche of um, hauntings that happen in, in places like that. But it almost seems like there's this is a, a haunted block of houses. Yeah, you, you seem so. Yeah, it's just it's pretty strange that, yeah, as you said, it's all happening in this sort of one area. You don't really hear much of it at all. No, no, not at all. And did they ever see this girl again, this apparition, anything like that? Did their... Um, did the, the grandma see anything like this ever? Um, they didn't mention that she'd seen anything, no. Um, and, yeah, that was sort of the last time they, they saw it. But, yeah, it sort of just leads on to, to what happens next, I think. But, yeah, it's it's just really strange, I think, that, the, that she saw it. And my friend never saw it. He never mentioned anything at all. He's like, he spoke to his wife. He was like, what are you doing? Because like, she was looking around the corner and stuff, trying to find out where this girl had actually gone. Yeah, that's, that's pretty creepy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> So what does this lead into exactly? Uh, so this leads into um, what happened at my own place. Um, this sort of happened uh, at, towards the end of last year. Um, so I have a, a younger daughter who is sleeping in her own room now. She's at the end of a house and our room's sort of at the front. And uh, she usually, if she wakes up overnight, she'll get up and sort of call out for me to come and get her. She'll be like, Dad, come and get me or so, um, oh, when this happened, like she usually does it during the middle of the night. So it happened again one night and I got up and went and got her and, um, she just comes back into our bed and, uh, for about half an hour after I, I got her, I heard a young girl's voice, um, call out daddy twice. And I sort of sat up and looked around 
I went to get out of bed and then I re- looked to my side and I realized my daughter was already in bed and she was fast asleep, like she was snoring, she was out of it. And I just thought it was really weird and I just went back to sleep. And um, later that morning, I got up earlier to go to the gym and I walked out of our house and we've got about four stairs leading up to our house. And I walked down to the bottom of the stairs and out into my car and I went to do a, a three-point turn to get out of our street. And so I pulled out and then went back to went to reverse back in towards our house. And on my reversing camera, I noticed this little sort of white blob on our reversing camera. So I thought that was weird. And I looked over my shoulder and at the bottom of the set of our stairs was this little girl sort of dressed in this white, uh, I don't know if it's like a night robe or pajamas or something like that. But it was just this white dress and she had the same sort of long black hair and she was just staring at my car. And I saw that. I sat there for about five seconds and I thought, nah, that's it. I'm out. And just <laughs> sort of gunned around the corner and just went. And um, I mentioned it sort of later on to my wife um, what happened last the night before uh, with the voice and like hearing little girls sort of call out. And she said, she mentioned it. She heard it as well. She's like, oh, yeah, that, that was weird because I thought you'd already got out the She's like, I was weird you put her back into bed because usually she would just spend the rest of the night in our bed. And um, yeah, that was that was the, the second part of it. Like with the little girl, I met that to her and yeah, she didn't she didn't really believe that it, that it sort of happened. But then she's like, oh, maybe if something's there, maybe check your dash cam because I've got one at the front and at the back of our car. And um, usually it, I've timed it, like, I timed it today actually. I haven't, it takes about five seconds or so to, to boot up and, and start recording. And um, usually by that time, I do the same thing sort of every day. I'm, I'm in the three-point turn. I go in and out and then off to work. And uh, I noticed that hadn't re- that day, it hadn't recorded until I was sort of halfway down our street. It hadn't actually booted up, which is sort of very strange. It, it never sort of does that. It's always pretty much bang on that five-second five mark. So, yeah. Um, I spoke to my friends as well about it because when it first happened, I was like, oh, that, that sounds pretty similar to what they saw at my friend's nan's place. And, um, yeah, I spoke to my friend's wife who saw the, um, the apparition and, and she's like, yeah, that's that's pretty much bang on them what I saw, but she was sort of hunched over. So, yeah, that was a pretty freak coincidence, I think. Yeah, no, it absolutely is. And I, and I feel like there's never really a coincidence in a, in a scenario like this because you're living on the same block or a few streets apart and you see essentially the same apparition. And yeah, I, I, I don't think that's something that is um, a, coincidence, a coincidence. I think that might be the same um, spirit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's just, yeah, really strange. Like I said, it's in that, that same area with, um, I hadn't really had anything at all happen in that, in our current house. Um, yeah. It's just, just been normal pretty much until yeah till that night and um yeah it was just really strange and for my wife to hear the same voice because I, I thought I was just like losing it I was like oh surely that that was just my daughter or something like that or because the neighbor our neighbors have kids as well and my wife's like oh maybe it was just the neighbor's kids but they were out for that weekend so I just yeah we couldn't put it down to anything else and once I saw what was out the front that sort of confirmed what was going on yeah absolutely and I mean have you had any other encounters with that child? Uh, no, that was the only one that um, that I actually, like, the full apparition appeared. I haven't seen anything else. Like, I've had my mobile phone moved, and that was fairly recent. That was probably last month. Like, I was having a shower and put it on um, our, our sink in the bathroom, which is, so it goes sort of the shower, our sink, and then our bath in the corner. So I was having a shower, and um, I had a, sort of a loud bang. And I got out of the shower, and my mobile phone had moved from, a corner of the sink all the way across into the, the corner where our bath is, like in the actual bath. So, yeah, I'm not sure if it was. Oh, wow. Yeah, I'm not sure if it was um, the same girl or, or what that actually was. But, yeah, it was, it was really strange. Have you maybe touched space with your neighbours or other people in the neighbourhood that you might be friendly with where you can kind of go and ask them, hey, have you seen a little weird girl running around your house or running around your property at odd times? Um, no, I haven't really. Um, they're all sort of a bit older. Um, I don't really want to go around and freak them out or <laughs> and, and say that, yeah, we've, we've seen all this. Um, but yeah, uh, I might 
maybe see some people down the road maybe or something like that. I might might have to do that and and look into it a bit more. Yeah, because it's really interesting because I've never heard of anyone that's had, I guess, an encounter over multiple areas. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've I've read a lot about um, like small girl sort of apparitions as well that it might be sort of something disguising itself as that. Um, Particularly... I'm not too sure. I don't want to sort of delve too much into it and then like stir up anything. So I've, I've got two sort of young kids as well. So I don't know. I, I'm like very interested to see what it is, but I've read some other stuff as well. Like that they can, something can disguise itself as like a, a small girl just to, to sort of, get in and then something else could have sort of eventuate from that. Yeah, absolutely. I know the kind of ground that you're walking into when it's very, it's not something that you probably want to muck around with. Let's just put it that yeah. way. And that's right. You don't want to be inviting any, I guess, negative uh, negativity into your house. Yeah, especially with yeah, a young right. family. And I'm I'm with you 100 percent on that. I think maybe don't go too deep into it, and maybe just see it what it for what it is. Maybe just see it as that that might be a friendly ghost walking around the neighborhood, just keeping watch. Um, yeah, but yeah, maybe maybe don't try to do anything that might draw its attention or. Bring its focus yeah, that's onto right. you, and like particularly like it's already sort of I don't know if it did it on purpose or not, or if that's just what it does. But it was sort of you know copying my daughter already, so it it, it sort of notices that. So I'm not sure if it was you know doing that itself or it just seen my daughter do it and starting to sort of copy onto that. So yeah, if it's sort of already going down the path, I don't really want to poke the bear too much. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I mean, if it's already showing these signs of intelligence and things like that, I mean. It, it's probably not something that you really want to get too close to. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. And have you have you had any other encounters with um, anything weird in that house? Yeah. So I had one more, um, which again was fairly recent. I think it was um, sort of last month. Um, I've recently had a, um, a, another child. Um, so we've got. I had him. Uh, we've had him for about yeah a month or two now. So yeah, it was when we. We just sort of first came back from hospital um, with him. I was sort of getting up to, to make sure he was all right. Like he just had a fan. I was going to birth him. So I went to walk out our lounge room, which sort of overlooked, um, sort of overlooked our lounge room. Sorry, our bedroom. I go out and I overlooked our, our lounge room because we're in a split little house. So I got to our um, bedroom door and I just had this like intense sort of feeling of, like dread and fear. It was just like, it just hit me in the face. Like, and I was just sort of standing there carrying him. I was like, oh, what, what is that? And then I sort of stepped out and we have like a, a modular lounge. So in the corner is the chase. And this, I walked out and there's this lady just sitting in white, just sitting in this modular bit of bed, or the, um, the chase bit of our modular lounge, sorry. And she's just looking straight ahead. And I, just sort of like when I surely if I'm just sleep deprived or something like I don't know what is going on and I sort of turned around and went back into our room just to sort of compose myself and go what is going on and then so I was like oh just go back out and have another look so I walked back out and she's just still there sitting there staring straight ahead like she never turned or looked at me she was a bit older than what this young girl was that I saw out the front um, so I say she'd be like more mid twenties to like thirties, and she had the same sort of dark hair, and um, just a white sort of. I don't know the dress. But I think it might have been dressed here yeah, that she had on. It was just all sort of translucent, so I couldn't really tell what she was actually wearing. It was just a long, I think a long gown or a dress maybe, and she was just sort of sitting there staring straight ahead, and um, she didn't sort of move or even flinch. It was just like this sort of cold dead sort of stare straight ahead at where our TV is sort of positioned on the wall. So, yeah, that was the, the other sort of weird experience we've had in the house. Yeah, wow. That one actually just gave me chills when you were telling me that one. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was it was pretty freaky. Like, I've never had that sort of feeling come over me, but it, when I went to go out that door, it was like, you don't want to go out there. There is like something really strange. Like it's, I just couldn't, can't explain it really. It's, it's like this sort of, I don't know, fear and I don't know if it's dread or something. It just, it just drains you. Like you go to that, 
the door and it just like it hit me and just like drained me of like this, this is just like so strange. I don't know what is out there, but it's not good. <laughs> yeah, no, not at all. And did you interact with this at all? No. Um, as I said, I thought I was just because we've just had a, a new baby. I thought I was just like sleep deprived and I was just losing it basically. Um, but no, it, it when I went back out there again, I was like, I need to take another look and see if you know, I'm seeing things or not. And I went back out there and didn't had no interest at all in what I was doing. It was just focused straight ahead and just staring like I, I didn't even flinch. Like I was there sort of on the edge of our banister sort of where, because I've got a few stairs, a couple of stairs that go down to where the lounge room is. And I was just standing there looking at it and then it just disappeared. No, that's, that's all I saw of it. I, nothing really happened after that. Wow. Just went back to bed. So it, it, it didn't, I guess, interact with you. It didn't do anything like that. It just sat there and it stared into the distance. Yep, that's pretty much it. Just this blank sort of cold stare straight ahead. That's all it did. That's creepy, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So that, that's what I was saying with my sort of thoughts towards that younger girl. So I don't know if whatever this is, is like, again, like portraying itself as this older sort of woman or lady um, and then going back to this younger girl or what's going on, I just don't know. Have you done any research into the area that you're living? Um, I had a brief sort of, I think got a sort of Google around to see if there was anything that, that came up, um, but there wasn't really much at all that sort of up in our area. Like we've had, there was an accident or oh, a while ago, um, probably about, oh, five or six years ago now, um, down the, sort of the end of our street towards where the main road is. Um, of this little boy who actually got hit by a bus, but that's all that we've sort of really heard. Everything else has been fairly quiet, I think. Do you think you've had maybe the same spirit attach itself to you from when you were eight or nine years old up until now? Yeah, possibly, yeah. Um, I did move away uh, when from that original house that we were in and I was about 12 or so to another suburb a bit further away. And um did have a few sort of minor things, nothing like what I've got at the moment where I'm seeing like apparitions and stuff like that. Um, when I was sort of a teenager, like I, I saw this sort of bright light out the front of my um, bedroom door. Like it was like someone had shone their, their headlights like full beam um, at my, my bedroom and that was just like a, a bright sort of instant light, like your high beams are just going straight at me. Um, that lasted for about five seconds or so and then just went away. Uh, other than that, been nothing really other than what we're experiencing now. It really sounds quite odd. I mean, the, the circumstances that you're in there, Cameron, it, it's it's very odd. I mean, I've, I've never yeah. really heard of anything following people around um, that I'm – that wasn't, I guess, um, a poltergeist or anything demonic where it can actually attach itself to you, but it doesn't seem to be doing really any of those things. The only little bit of poltergeist action that I've taken from what you've told me is the fact that it, it slid your phone off a countertop onto the ground. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, um, yeah. There, there, there's been nothing sort of out of the ordinary other than, yeah, what you said with, that, with the mobile phone. Um, yeah, we haven't experienced anything that's sort of stood out like um, our kids toys sort of go off and every now and then but that's, yeah we could just be the batteries or something like that that hasn't sort of been as clear as what that mobile, my mobile phone sort of did across the, the basin into the, um, the bathroom so yeah I'm not too sure, yeah. Well, as a newborn dad, I know all about those baby toys going off at the random times throughout the night because they scare the crap out of me. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> well, definitely with all this happening as well, and then you go out into the lounge room and the one of them goes off and you know, a bit of a fuss. <laughs> and, and those toys, they just seem to be the loudest toys in the world. So you could be in the deepest sleep possible, and these toys, they just go off and they'll rat, rattle the whole house. Yeah, that's it. Or they they light up and everything will just go everywhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, Cameron, yeah. it, it's I I don't know what to really say about your experience. I mean, it, it's so unique. Um, potentially do a little bit of research into the area. Um, and maybe have a look around settlement times and see if there was maybe any major events in history or or anything like that that might have happened around there because it's so unique to hear that a haunting 
And if these are individual hauntings, that's I guess that's even weirder because how do you how do you get that lucky or unlucky that you've encountered hauntings in three different areas or you've got something following you? Yeah, well that's it. Yeah, it'd be good to know what what's sort of actually happening and and um and narrow down yeah what's going on. It's um it's very strange. Um yeah, but we do, I have noticed um previously I've done a little bit of sort of searching um, on the area that there was like an estate that covered a fairly large portion of where I'm living at the moment. So uh, yeah, I'm not sure if anything happened with that. Maybe yeah, it's definitely worth having a look at into. Have a chat to, to, if you have paranormal groups around the area, maybe get in contact with them because they might be able to help you out. Um, and they might just be able to explain some of the things that are happening a little bit better than them. Obviously what, what we're discovering here. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I'll have to, um, definitely look into it. Um, yeah, it'd be good to see what's sort of following me. <laughs> and, and just before we wrap this up tonight, what does your wife think of the scenario? Um, my wife's uh, a bit of a skeptic. She doesn't really sort of buy into it all. Um, but yeah, she did admit that she did hear the, um, the little girl call out. And um, she sort of, I think she might be sort of coming around to, to seeing what's sort of going on, but she's never sort of experienced anything on the level of what I saw or what I've been having for much my whole life. So, yeah, um, she's always trying to find sort of a rational reason of what's going on. And that's fair enough too. I mean, it's it's easy to, to try rationalise something than say, yeah, we have a ghost following us. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, where I'm sort of the opposite and just sort of fall into it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, Cameron, I want to thank you for coming on the show because that is an absolutely fantastic encounters. Well, I guess a, a range of encounters that you've had. Yeah, no problem. Uh, been good to talk to you about. And that's going to do it for tonight. And remember, if you have had an encounter, get in touch with me. My email address is believe at ccradio.com.au or you can message me on Facebook and that's facebook.com forward slash believe UFO radio. Until next time, stay safe and you've been listening to Believe Australian Paranormal and UFO Radio.